Christian Parenting. Welcome to the Bible for Kids podcast with your host, best-selling children's author, Amy Parker, and author and co-creator of VeggieTales, Mike Naraki. If instilling biblical values in kids is important to you, this podcast will give you the resources, wisdom, and hope to do just that. Now, let's join our hosts, Amy and Mike, for this week's episode. Welcome to the Bible for Kids podcast. I'm Mike Naraki. And I'm Amy Parker, and today we are super excited to welcome Art Eris and Linda Howard. But before we really introduce them, we start every Bible for Kids podcast with a Bible verse. Mike? And uh, this verse is from Isaiah 40, verses 6 through 8 of the NLT. A voice said, shout. I asked, what should I shout? Shout that the people are like the grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord. And so it is Mm -hmm. with people. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. I think we could probably just stop right there. (laughs) (laughs) No, we've got people here. We've got guests. (laughs) Oh, 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 right. (laughs) Art Aris is the founder of Kingstone Media and the executive editor of the Kingstone Bible, which was a finalist for the 2017 Christian Book of the Year children's category. Writing and producing recognition and credit include best tv movie hollywood's next success contest best feature florida film and television best feature angel awards several major motion picture options and over 60 comic book and animation credits to date and linda howard is associate publisher for children and youth at tyndale house publishers she brings an expen- ex- expensive background <laughs> i'm sure she does well that too <laughs> <laughs> an extensive background working uh, with children and children's products uh, to her role, including teaching, marketing, and product development for several brands. Linda currently leads the kids team, developing the overall strategy for Tyndale uh, children and youth, acquiring projects, and overseeing product development for all books. She's also worked in the marketing arena and built strong relationships with several of Tyndale's publishing partners. She oversees the Compassion International Publishing Partnership and has worked with best-selling authors. Oh, who's this? Mike Naraki <laughs> and Amy Parker. <laughs> and, Mike, and did you write that? And, I don't know, and more. <laughs> Art, uh, it's great to have you. And Linda, the mastermind behind saying yes to publishing the Dead Sea Squirrels series. <laughs> we're, we're, we're thrilled to have you both here. <laughs> So welcome. We're so happy to be here. Thank you. So before we dig in talking about the Epic Bible, which, so we heard an ad for the Epic Bible on the radio and my 16 year old, I don't know if he's your target market or not, Mm -hmm. but um, my 16 year old said, wow, that sounds cool. So we will have to have an Epic Bible at our house. Mm -hmm. Um, But before we dig into talking about that, Art, we'd love to hear a little bit about your background and what drew you into kids publishing and entertainment. Sure. Well, actually, I was a children's pastor. I had a very large children's ministry, and we would bring in, we had a Saturday program we called Saturday Sunday School, and we would bring in hundreds of kids, and I was always struggling to find materials to connect with them. And kind of the same time as that coalesced around that was I would walk into Barnes & Noble on Friday night, and I would see all of these teenagers just sitting on the floor reading just manga, graphic novels, and things. And so I just had one of those aha epiphanies and realized the need for that. But, uh, you know, we've always been a fan, Mike, of VeggieTales, obviously. I've had two boys. So awesome. we, uh, but when we had, we said, there's a different bent here. And so we realized that there, there really wasn't a Marvel in the faith market, faith market. And so we began recruiting artists who had worked with Marvel in D.C. And obviously, as a pastor, my passion was the Bible. And so we spent about seven years creating the most complete uh, graphic adaptation of the Bible that's ever been done. And then Tyndale. Um, is is basically publishing the highlight reel. They're publishing the best of the best of the Kingston Bible. Oh, that's so cool. And uh, so, so Linda, I, I want to uh, ask you the same question. Uh, if you can tell us a little bit about your motivations and journey into kids publishing. Sure. I actually um, went to school. I got a music education degree. So I've always had a real passion for working with kids and helping kids out and, um, kind of winding road to get to publishing through uh, working as a, um, in a community school of the arts. I taught preschool for 14 years. Wow. And then, yeah. 
Um, and you put then, in your time. <laughs> yeah, there should be a medal for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved it. It was so great. They're but, so fun. Um, they're the best. And um, so anyway, and then came to Tyndale uh, 14 years ago. I've been at Tyndale now for 14 years and started out actually as an executive assistant and then have moved and worked several years with the focus on the family partnership and now have uh, taken over the kids stuff. So it's been just, you know how God does that. He just kind of every little place you go leads you to the next place and prepares you for the next thing that he has for you. So that's been a lot of fun to watch him do that. That's awesome. It's amazing. So many guests that we have on here, you see that same path, that that same God-guided path for each of them. And it's so funny how he just, how everybody sort of has the same story in their different stories about how God got them to, to where they are. Um, Absolutely. So, yes. And so the Epic Bible uh, is where we are today. Um, God's story from Eden to eternity. That is such a great title. Yes. Um, yeah. So tell us how, and you guys can take turns or ping pong or however you want to do it, but tell us how this idea and this project originated. I'll defer to Linda for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we um, knew that Art had been doing some great work on the um the kingstone bible is um his version and then he's got a trilogy that's got what over three thousand or somewhere close to three thousand pages if you do this trilogy that's the, the most comprehensive graphic novel adaptation of the bible around and it's amazing and we just really felt like we could kind of come in and work with him and do something that we could pare down a little bit and still keep the entire story arc of the Bible intact while uh, giving people something that they could buy in a little more, like Art said, highlighted real, a little more truncated <laughs> version of that. And so started talking with him and signed the contract and um, have been working on it for several years now, but are so, so excited to have it coming out and, um, just expertise that art has put into all of this initially has made our job so much easier in creating the, the version of this that we created. You know, he's got Marvel and DC illustrators that have worked on this. And so everything's just so top notch. Yeah, well, that's, that's great. And Linda, Linda, we're having a little bit of an uh, issue uh, with your, your connection. But one thing that was really cool is the word entire Bible. <laughs> got stretched out over about 10 seconds. It felt, like, oh, it, no. it felt like we meant to do that. The entire. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, we heard most of what you said. That was awesome. Yes. And do not apologize because Linda is coming to us live from the shed aquarium. So oh, it just... it's such a beautiful background. I wish you could see it. It looks like a beautiful thing. It's amazing. It but is. It just... I'll tell you. Are you with grandchildren? It just speaks I, to your dedication to children. <laughs> I am. It's actually my grandson's fifth birthday today. Happy and birthday, so, grandson. <laughs> I will tell him. Charlie's turning five today, and so we're celebrating with him. Um, yes, so don't so. apologize at all for the lag. <laughs> Thank you. So, so I, I was checking out, uh, you know, the art for this book, and it's it's just unbelievable. It's fantastic. And um, art, could you could you tell us a, a little bit about the artist you recruited for this project? You mentioned, you mentioned DC and Ar Marvel, but it's not just one or two people. The credits read like a feature film, you know, with art directors and pencilers, inkers, colorists, letterers. I mean, uh, tell tell us a little bit about the team around this Bible. Uh, sure. I will say one little addendum to what Linda said. One of the things, too, that the Epic Bible has that no other graphic Bible has is that she has, they were very wise. They took a section from our graphic novel called The Book of God that explains how we got the Bible. Uh, a youth pastor in my church said, Art, he said, the biggest question the kids had is how do we got the Bible? How do we know that it's reliable? How do we know that it's true? How did it come to us? And Tyndale was very wise. They explained that even before the introduction to the Bible. So that's one of the key thing, key assets, I think, that they have about the Epic Bible. As far as artist Mike, um, I probably offended a few Christian artists um, in the last few years because once we kind of got going, I had a lot of people contact Kingstone Comics. And they said, hey, I love Jesus. I want to draw for you. And I, I said, have you worked for Marvel or DC? And if the answer was no, usually the answer was, you know, you can't come draw for us because we really wanted to have, we always had a vision that, would, you know, whenever people would look at Christian comic art, 
they could lay it right beside Superman and Batman, it would be the same quality. So 95% of artists have worked with Marvel and DC and they just, they, all of them have different styles and we just try to match the style like with Job or it was Abraham or Christ or whatever. And so basically we just pulled from guys and ladies that have worked for Marvel and DC. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it, de it definitely, definitely has that flavor to it. And it's just so, so pro um, really, really neat to see all of these stories come to life in that style. Yeah. Then of course, obviously we, the content, since I'm a pastor, was very key to us. We want to make sure it was biblically accurate, obviously. And so we have three primary writers. There's myself, there's Ben Avery, who has done a lot of writing with Zondervan. And he also for uh, George R.R., R., um, the guy that did the uh, J, uh, did the Games of Thrones. He also did a set of mm. comic books for him. Oh, and also, Martin. I'm sorry. Yeah, George R. R. Martin. Yes. Uh, sorry, George R. R. Martin. Yes. <laughs> sorry. When you have all also, R. you kind of figure it's Tolkien, but that's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, then the, and then the third writer is Randy Alcorn, obviously, who is a very gifted writer. So the, we were the three primary writers on there. And uh, we just really wanted to make it cinematic. And we really liked the moniker that Tyndale picked, the Epic Bible, because we think the Bible is a very epic piece. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, and, and just being part of kids entertainment for so long with VeggieTales, we did, you know, as, as we interpreted all the stories for, you know, vegetables for preschoolers, <laughs> you know, doing, <laughs> you know, you, you get you get this idea that the, you know, the Bible is, you know, can be, you know, fun with fun stories. And, you know, that, that was sort of, you know, age appropriate for that, that age, but the, the Bible really is epic. It really is, you know, rated PG 13 at least, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> to, to, to see this depiction is really, really neat with all these stories. So um, you mentioned, Art, that you started working on this well before, um, you know, Tyndale became a part of it. So the question, <laughs> how long did it take to put this together might be a, a complicated answer. <laughs> but, um, but can you let us know just sort of the scope of how long you guys have been working on this, both um, you as Kingstone and then once Tyndale got involved, how long that process took? It was, it was seven years on the Bible, and Tyndale mm -hmm. came to us. We, we met at ICRS, and we saw some real commonality, and obviously we love Tyndale and they, the Living Bible and everything. They have a real passion for explaining the Bible in the common language to people. And so it was a real affinity between our two uh, publishing entities. And uh, so uh, I, we worked on the Bible for seven years, and then I think Tyndale has been working for about three years. Linda, how long have you been on yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. Three, three to four years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been a while. That's wonderful. Well, um, I, I, we're going to need to take a short break, uh, but we will be right back on the Bible for Kids podcast. Announcing Adventures from the Workshop and Beyond, a new five-book box set of picture books from the Slugs and Bugs show. In the world of modern family life, it's easy to get sidetracked and forget what really matters. That's why Randall Goodgame and the team at the Slugs and Bugs Show created a new book series that joyfully weaves spiritual truth into the rhythms of each day. Delightful, whimsical fun for kids of all ages, these stories will aid families in exploring important topics such as friendship, culture, silliness, creativity, and imagination. Order your set today at slugsandbugs.com. Words are powerful, especially God's word, which has the power to transform our hearts and minds. Tyndale Kids has created a sweet and simple way to speak God's life-giving word over the kids in your life or anyone who needs a reminder of who they are in Christ with the generation-claimed three-book set of Bible promises. Each book in the series contains life-giving promises from Scripture that remind all God's children, both young and old, of who they are in Him. Page after page shares a promise from God and the corresponding scripture from the Bible. Readers will be transformed from the inside out and rest easier in God's love for them. The set includes the following board books. You are, scripture promises reminding readers of who God says they are. Tonight, scripture promises for a peaceful night's rest. And Chosen, scripture promises that reveal God has a plan for each person's life. Each book is also available individually and can be found wherever books are sold. Get swept away by God's awesome story with the Epic Bible. For decades, people around the world have been captivated by comics and superheroes. Comic narratives have the power to draw us into a hero's journey where the good guy wrestles with darkness but ultimately wins against the bad guy. 
Adapted from the NLT translation and illustrated by DC and Marvel artists, this graphic novel style Bible will take teens and comic fans on a next level journey that will point them to a real life savior, Jesus, who infinitely outmatches any superhero and triumphs over sin and darkness, crushing the enemy. The Bible is perfect for teens, comic book fans, reluctant readers, or anyone looking for a fresh approach to Bible reading. The Epic Bible's cinematic storytelling will make God's Word come alive. Brought to you by Wander, the young adult imprint of Tyndale House Publishers. And we are back on the Bible for Kids podcast, and we are speaking with Linda Howard and Art Aris. So, Art, you mentioned this uh, a little bit earlier, but uh, there's a wonderful prologue uh, to this project. It's a guy sitting by a fire in his study, reading his Bible, uh, with the quote that we mentioned at the top of the interview, uh, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God endures forever. Uh, He then turns and talks to the reader about the good book. Um, And you mentioned that, that you mentioned a little bit about this, but tell us why you decided to start the Bible uh, with this, with this framing device. Well, the one of the things that people neglect, and you know, in the in the corrosion of our culture, I'll say, is a lot of people don't realize that the Bible is really the bedrock of Western civilization, and we want people to be able to see the importance of this book. And obviously, we as people of faith, we embrace it very strongly. But what we've seen is that uh, we have had just blue coodles of people that really were not people of faith that were drawn to this because they, they, a lot of people, what we have seen, a lot of people are afraid to pick up a text Bible because it's got hard to understand words and places and names, that kind of stuff, but they'll pick up a Bible comic and begin engaging in it. And so we felt like it was a, just a good entry point to go into the full Epic Bible. Hmm. That's great. And so this is a graphic novel depiction of scripture. Um, so from an editorial sense, I have a background in editorial. So from an editorial Ah. sense, I'm thinking what an undertaking this is. You obviously couldn't do a fully illustrated entire text Bible because that would be multiple volumes of coffee table books bigger than the coffee table. Um, (laughs) but how did you decide which stories to include? Um, did that depend on how it would be graphically depicted or was it more about telling the story of the Bible or a little bit of both? Linda? Well, for us, what we did is took, I mean, art version pretty much has almost everything. And so what we did was um, had one of our Bible editors because, you know, they just have this so ingrained in their souls because they do it all the time. And she took the story arc of the Bible and kept that intact through um, kind of picking and choosing the work that Art had done. So, you know, if there's moments in the Bible that aren't, everything's integral, but integral to the overarching story that you could maybe not have I'm trying to think of what we cut and right now like maybe you could not have Hosea you know because whatever it may be you could leave a piece out and still have the true story arc of the Bible intact then we would kind of leave some of that out because like I said art has like 3,000 pages and ours is yeah. around 800 pages. So we had to cut out a lot. <laughs> so art um, does have the coffee table books that are bigger than the coffee table. <laughs> you, you have to be an Olympic weightlifter to carry it around. Yes, <laughs> and they're amazing. Absolutely amazing. The other thing that, um, that I love that art did and that we kept is on every page of the Bible, there is um, the, the scripture reference. You know, and many of the comic uh, adaptations that are out there don't do that. It's like, just here's your, here's your comic book adaptation or your graphic novel adaptation of a Bible story. We also give the scripture reference because what we really want people to do is love it enough that they're going to yeah. want to go back yeah. and read the Bible yeah. afterwards and get the rest of the story as, um, you know, the, the old TV uh, radio show. <laughs> and yeah. that's the rest of the story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you, so. off the top of your head, do you, do you know how many stories are included in the Epic Bible? Oh gosh, you're testing me here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's over a hundred, I think, but I can't remember the exact number. Oh, I should that's have wonderful. looked that up. <laughs> that's a, well, yeah, but 700 pages is still quite a bit. So that's, that's incredible. Yeah. And to realize that there's, you know, uh, what'd you say? 3000 in the, in the original too. So that, that's yeah, somewhere be. close to that. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and art in the, in the original version, I mean, does that basically include the whole narrative of the Bible? Do you even have the, the who begat who's in, um, <laughs> in the beginning of Matthew? <laughs> There might be one panel to the who begats. <laughs> okay, I got gotcha. you. The who begats, I love that. <laughs> so from the digital copy I viewed, I wasn't able to review the whole thing, but the guy in the study that Mike was talking about earlier who opens up the book, does he make another appearance after Revelation and, and close it down, a framing device, as Mike, the uh, film professor, called it? <laughs> does, he, does he appear again at the end for the wrap-up or... Or do we just end with the big picture of Revelation? You know what? He's um, not in the first, the big he's not in the first edition, but he might make it in the second edition. <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy. I like that guy by the fire. <laughs> and just have him show up to say, and that's the whole story. <laughs> hey, yeah. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was Mike's idea. Tune in next time for... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what happened to the guy? <laughs> Oh, uh, so, uh, so can you tell me, are there, are there translations in the works? This seems really, um, ripe for that. And, you know, j just, I, I, you know, for, for doing different translations in different countries, are you, are you, are you hoping to, to do that and, and bring this in, in uh, really around the world? Actually, art has already done quite a bit of um, working with other countries and languages to translate and Tyndale for the Kingstone. And then for the Epic Bible, we're also working with Brazil and several other, um, countries to to have this translated into other languages as well That's but are you've done a ton of that yeah we we have uh mike that's a really good question we're in about 39 languages and counting um wow. there's one there's one muslim country it's, it's really interesting um these marvel came out with their own muslim characters not long ago and we've seen, especially in Muslim context, a real affinity to comics. And again, a lot of people who will pick up a comic book, well, who won't pick up a Bible? And we see that obviously in a lot of places overseas. And so there's one um, really highly, uh, I'll say security risk Muslim country that we've already had over 500,000 distributions of our Bible comics in that language. Wow. Um, and so we see just, we're working in Turkmen, Arabic, Turkish, you know, Azeri, Kazakh. And there's a lot of people that, again, the comics is just really a transcultural medium. So that's a very good question, Mike, because we think that the Epic Bible, you know, is that one piece is really going to go about in a lot of languages. And what we did was when I'd go speak, a lot of people said, hey, we love this incredible thing, but you've given us this big steer cow. Can you cut it into hamburgers? So we ended up releasing <laughs> like 58. Yeah, we released like 58 comic books. And then we have the highlight reel of the Epic Bible. <laughs> which is the T-bone. <laughs> the T-bone. <laughs> That's right. The I love it. <laughs> uh, well, and it's got to be interesting too, just, you know, from, a, a, you know, I think about lettering, you know, for, you, you got to redo all of that and do you have to find a, a, a new lettering artist for that in the language that you're, you're going into? And especially Arabic, I would imagine you're now going right to left instead of left to right. So, so much needs to kind of adapt, right? It, it, it's not hard. We just build templates and you have the uh -huh. bubbles and then they can expand them in Adobe Illustrator and then they can just plug in, you know, Kazakh or Kyrgyz or whatever language. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. We think over the next few years, the Epic Bible, the Bible comics, we think it'll be in numerous languages and it's just comics are very popular. There's just, you know, Marvel and DC are like Coca-Cola. They're all over the world. Yeah, it's true. And I may be stating the obvious here, but the the awesome thing about a graphic Bible um, is that even if you don't know the language, even if they pick it up in English and aren't able to understand English, the graphic nature of the of the work allows you to follow the story even without the words there. And so um, so even without translations, I feel like it could be, you know, a powerful depiction of of the gospel. Well, I sent, I sent Linda a picture last week, and this is a guy is in the deep bush of Papua New Guinea who's translating these Bible comics into human language. And he said that the kids who can't, he, they can't read, they're working literacy. He said after the second, third, or fourth comic, they're already reading because, you know, wow. the sequential art, and they're able to understand and make the sense. So we think what the Epic Bible is, is going to be a, a very strong product. 
It's going to be epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, venture to say epic. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Ara and Linda, please tell our listeners where we can find you online, um, how they can connect with Tyndale, where they can find the Epic Bible, uh, and just where they can learn more about you and your work. Uh, so uh, we have a website called theepicbible.com that you can go to and learn more about the Epic Bible. Um, at Tyndale.com, you can always find um, the Epic Bible. It's on Amazon. It's in the retailers. Pretty much you can find it anywhere right now. It's officially released. Um, so it is out there to be purchased. And um, yeah, we're just, I don't know, we're really excited about people getting this into their homes and drawing people in who may not want to read the Bible otherwise. This is yeah. just a great entry point for people. So, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty much everywhere with it at this point. Yeah. Uh, especially kids that have reading and sensory issues, you'll see a lot of people that were really in, in deaf and other ones will have a, a real affinity to that. Um, you know, if you want the T-bone, go to Tyndale. And if you want the little hamburger bites, go to KingstoneComics.com. <laughs> there you go. Depending on what you got a hankering for. <laughs> I'll take the sliders. <laughs> That's great. So Art and Linda, thank you so much for, uh, for being with us today. It's been a pleasure having you on. And listeners, uh, you know we're always giving away free stuff on our socials. So don't forget to follow us on Instagram or Facebook at The Bible for Kids or at our website, thebibleforkids.com. Again, you guys, thank you so much for uh, joining us, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Michael. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for listening to the Bible for Kids podcast with Amy Parker and Mike Naraki. Be sure to connect with The Bible for Kids on Instagram, Facebook, and at thebibleforkids.com. The Bible for Kids podcast is powered by the Christian Parenting Podcast Network. Find out more at christianparenting.org. Our show is also available on waynation.com. Christian Parenting.